Okay, so uh, for the microservice architecture, uh, actually there isn't uh, an official definition for, for it, but uh, just a common um, consensus in the ecosystem. So the microservice architecture uh, uses a set of service, small services to develop a single and a large application. Each service runs in its own process and then the commu communication between the services uses uh, the lightweight mechanism, uh, usually the HTTP APIs. So these services uh, are built on uh, business and uh, uh, can be deployed uh, and can be deployed by automated deployment uh, mechanism. These services uh, can be programmed in different uh, program language and also can use different uh, data storage technologies. Also, it can uh, also it maintain a minimum of uh, centralized management. So, uh, some of the existing uh, microservice architecture are listed here. See the Spring Cloud and the uh, Dubo, etc. So, some of the advantages of the microservice archi architecture are obvious. Um, each service is simple and focus on a business function, which reduce the complexity of uh, the development of an application. And all these services uh, are, coupled, uh, are loosely coupled, so uh, each service can be deployed independently and uh, upgraded uh, transparently. So for the uh, horizontal scale, the previous uh, practice is to copy the entire application into different nodes. But uh, if uh, different components in the application has different extension requirement, then the, so the, then the microservice architecture is uh, more flexible than the traditional one, um, as uh, each service can be extended independently according to the actual requirement. And it can improve the fault tolerance. And under this architecture, um, a fault can be largely isolated in a service. Then the uh, damage caused by errors um, is reduced by some kind of mechanism like uh, the rate limiting or the uh, circuit breaking. So that uh, can be guaranteed uh, uh, normal operation on the core business. Uh, we also have talked that uh, the services can be programmed in different languages, and uh, uh, since they can have each service can have its own database, then it can use different uh, database technologies. Then, what the disadvantages? Um, since the logic, uh, which not related to the business, is moved outside of the service, then the uh, complexity of the communication increase together increase the complex complexity with the data consistency uh, as each service has its own database. Also, it increased the difficulties of test because of uh, uh, numerous distributed uh, independent services. But generally, the um, advantages overcome the disadvantages um, if one of the outstanding problem is resolved, that is, uh, the networking is required to be transparent, and uh, the uh, problem in the networking is required to be identified uh, quickly and uh, easily once the problem occurs. So uh, then came the uh, service mesh, mm. came to uh, resolve the complexity, the communi communication complexity in the microservice architecture. So uh, generally, service mesh is an uh, infrastructure layer for handling the inter-service communication. And this layer is used to implement reliable uh, request delivery for the uh, cloud native application which has uh, uh, complex service top topology. So it is typically a set of uh, lightweight network proxies. 
um, which are deployed with the application but transparent to the application. Service mesh differs in the traditional infrastructure layer uh, in that it forms a distributed interconnection proxy network. It usually deploys the uh, network proxies in the form of sidecars. So uh, see the picture in the right, then each, uh, the green one is for a service and the blue one is for the sidecar proxy. So um, each service has its own proxy. And all the proxies are connected to form the mesh. The service is not aware of the proxy. It just sends out the traffic outside. And all the communication to or from the service is routed by the proxy. From the architecture, we can see that the service mesh is composed of a control plan and a data plan. So for the control plan, it provides policies and configurations for each data plan in the mesh. It doesn't attach any uh, uh, packet or traffic, but it uh, do uh, turns all the data plan into a distributed system. For the data plan, um, all the services traffic goes through the uh, sidecar uh, proxies, and uh, the data plan is uh, responsible for the service discovery, uh, health checking, rating, load balancing, and um, also the authentication and uh, observability. So typical uh, data plan solution is Envoy. Okay, so okay, so uh, for Envoy, it uh, uh, do ha it does have a uh, uh, official definition. So it is a modern L7 uh, proxy, and also the communication bus designed for large model uh, service oriented arch architecture. It has uh, um, it has a few of uh, it has a few of outstanding features. So it is programmed uh, in C++ and which plus high performance, pro provide high performance. It supports uh, HTTP2 and uh, both HTTP1 protocol. It can be used as a two-way transpa transparent uh, network proxy which can, can bridge the, all the combination of the HTTP1 and the HTTP2 client and the servers. Another benefit is that it can help to create a persistent connection, which can make the uh, which can make the request and the response reuse it. So, Envoy also supports the gRPC protocol. gRPC is the RPC framework from from Google. Uh, currently, it's very popular in the ecosystem. gRPC uses the HTTP2 protocol as uh, its underlying multi, uh, multiplexing um, protocols. Envoy supports all the HTTP2 uh, functions which, are need, which, were needed, which is needed by the uh, routing and the load balancing, um, which underlines the gRPC request and, re and the response. Envoy has the uh, L3 and the L4 filters. It, this kind of uh, filter chain mechanism allows the developer to uh, write filters and uh, perform different uh, TCP proxy tasks easily. T together, uh, it provided uh, the HTTP L7 filter. Some of these filters can insert it into the HTTP connection management, um, which can perform uh, uh, advanced tasks such as uh, uh, caching, uh, rate limiting, forwarding, and, and also the database is sniffing. So for MongoDB and the DynamoDB, so the uh, Envoy provides the sniffer filter to get the status from their uh, local database. Also the, for the L7 routing, there is a, a router filter then which handles the advanced uh, routing functionalities. Envoy is able to route and redirect requests based on the 
pass permissions uh, container temp, runtime, and uh, parameter values. So it can also handle, it can be also used to handle edge traffic and the packet, uh, which very similar to the traditional uh, reverse proxies. It can also be used uh, to form the uh, envoy mesh. Okay, to be used as a service mesh data plan, the envoy, um, so the envoy provides, uh, so the envoy provides uh, several main functions. For the service discovery, uh, envoy supports, uh, envoy supports multiple ways of service discovery through the SDS, so uh, the service discovery service. Uh, normally, the um, orchestration engine, um, we are, like the Kubernetes, will provide the service registry service. And then the service mesh control plan uh, use this service from the service registry and uh, pro provide uh, the pr platform independent uh, uh, service discovery interface to the data plan. Then the invoice instance will perform this service discovery through the interface and then dynamically upload its own load balancing pool. Then at the once the load balancing, um, Envoy supports automatic retries, um, circuit breaking and the global rate limiting also the caching, especially for the circuit breaking. So in the realm of a microservice, uh, service always also often, often invoke each other. If one of the service is busy or unable to respond to the request, then it is possible to cause uh, the large cascading failure in a cluster. Then uh, we shall make the entire system unavailable. So this is, re this is commonly referred to as the uh, service uh, avalanche effect. So circuit breaking is used to, to deal with this kind of situation. Then um, by default, circuit breaking is uh, turned off and to allow the packet to pass through. And, uh, but once the fail count uh, reaches a threshold, then the circuit breaking will uh, start to effect and then the packet will be blocked. So it is allows a more elegant uh, troubleshooting and the timely response before the uh, problem is amplified. Then the health check. So uh, Envoy provide a health check uh, subsystem and it can perform an active health check on the upstream service cluster. Uh, it can also combine the health check information and the service discovery information together and to identify the healthy load balance candidates. Also, uh, this subsystem uh, support a passive or health check from the uh, service cluster. So the fault injection uh, means that a protocol specific fault can be intentionally injected into the network which creates uh, the packet delay, also other damages to the TCP layer, uh, which will help to verify or identify the, uh, the problems in the system. Then for the uh, micro, for the microservice, so it needs a good uh, observability. So Envoy supports uh, strong statistical support on all the subsystems together with, uh, together with uh, distributed tracing. So normally, uh, basically, what a proxy does is just to forward the request to the target. So uh, there has four concepts in this uh, process in Envoy. It's the listener, endpoint, class, and the root. So listener is the name address, which can be connected by the downstream uh, clients. And endpoints uh, usually uh, are the target's IP address and the ports, where the proxy can forward the request to. Cluster contains uh, multiple endpoints. Uh, which behaves exactly the same. For example, if there are three containers running, 
then there might be uh, three pairs of uh, IP address and port, but the deployed survey, but the deployed three services in these containers are exactly the same. Then they can form a cluster. Then for root, root contains some kind of some rules. Then it can help to uh, forward the request to a specific cluster. A uh, typical situation is that. Uh, uh, a set of uh, a set of uh, um, cluster can have the similar um, can have the similar uh, function, but they just differ in the version number. Then it can use the root to uh, can use the root to uh, root to the uh, specific cluster with the specific uh, specific version number. Then for the invoice in implementation, it uses the single process and the multi threads model. So it has a main thread, and uh, it has a main thread and uh, uh, much multiple uh, or worker threads. Each thread, each worker thread, uh, deal with the uh, service independently and uh, um, and independently. When the connection is established, uh, then the uh, worker is responsible for the entire life cycle of the uh, connection. And so in most cases, then the number of the uh, thread uh, configured uh, with each envoy is uh, suggested uh, to be equal to the CPU thread number. So for the uh, TCP proxy, uh, it is a basic uh, function for the uh, basic function in, the invo in envoy. So uh, the TCP proxy can be used uh, alone or, t or Combination or in the combination with other uh, filters uh, like the uh, HTTP uh, uh, database filters or others. Then uh, for the L3, L4 filters, there are uh, typically three kind of them. It's the read filter, write filter, and the read write filters. So when the envoy uh, receive data from the down downstream connection, then uh, it, the read filter is called. Then when envoy wants to send the data to the downstream connection, then the write filter is, is called. Then if envoy wants both, then the read write filter is called. Um, so it's another, uh, so it, besides this, it's, uh, another, it's uh, other HTTP L7 filters. We have talked about this before. So uh, after all the filters has finished their uh, tasks, then the request can be routed to the specific cluster. After that, the load balancer will take effect. It will uh, choose a suitable uh, healthy uh, endpoints. Then, uh, for a then for a request, then uh, its journey at this step has finished. So, in the uh, envoy uh, environment, so uh, the configuration is information can change dynamically, uh, but envoy supports the. Uh, configuration hot reloading. It provides uh, several sets of uh, um, interface called the XDS, the LDS, RDS, CDS, EDS. So uh, through this AD, through this XDS, then the envoy can um, dynamically fetch the configuration information and then uh, perform the uh, configuration hot reloading. So uh, this is the, um, how Envoy is, is used in, in, in Istio. And the current states and plans. So uh, currently, Envoy already enabled on ARM. And, on ARM, and uh, our potential plans could be the performance profiling. And uh, also can evaluate the possibility to accelerate the proxy. Uh, we are not sure whether VPP is the uh, uh, right choice, but uh, it's uh, under investigation. So. Sorry, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I met a lot of failures for the displays.